What's up, everybody? Sadiq Tuma back here with another NBA draft player breakdown. This time we're looking at Nikola Jovic, the very interesting prospect from Serbia. Um, this this draft doesn't really have, you know, Luka Doncic type prospects that are you know projecting stardom, but it's definitely got some guys that are very intriguing and should be very productive NBA players from the start or should develop into it. And between him and Usman Jeng, two guys that are you know pretty much locks to be first round picks uh from the international class he's definitely the more nba ready one with you know a, a very interesting skill set and he's uh you know he's at 6 10 215 seven foot wingspan he he fits his skill set fits what nba teams really look for in just modern day forwards right in terms of his ability to move without the ball to handle the ball as a point forward to shoot to pass uh post up a little bit we'll see kind of his inside outside game as we go along but overall he brings a very intriguing skill set um three level score in a way um definitely gives you all sorts of things his passing is interesting there's a lot of things that you know you really like with him and there are some things that are some issues for sure but we'll start out there with his um three-point shooting Jovic is um he he's got a I guess varying sort of release meaning he shoots about 35 percent you can see he's definitely got you know limitless range gaudy NBA range at times you can see when he shoots from farther back uh you can see his you know effortless stroke gets the ball up there good mechanics high release point but there are times you're going to see him rush it and you're going to see him miss because of that, I believe. But he can shoot, you know, off the dribble and spot-up situations or, um, you know, however. And let's, let's play this first clip. You got Jovic over here. And let's run this play. So he's up there at the top, grabs the ball. You see it, one easy motion, goes in. Um, over here. And here you're going to see as the clock's ticking down, you're going to see him shoot a little more rush, as I was talking about, but this one he will make. And you'll see some of that ability to just pull up off the dribble, right? Right there. Puts that ball up real quick. And you saw, right, that release was definitely a lot faster than the first one. Um, but as he puts it together, there's very little dip as he gathers, right? And puts it together. And then puts the ball up there and shoots. Good range, obviously. And you see some of that three-point shooting ability. Over here, now you'll see him struggle. Um, or rather, when he struggles, you'll see some of the issues. As he sizes up the defender here, right, a couple little crossovers, and then just pulls up. As that shot clock is tipping down, you see him, and you see that one, right? It was definitely a lot faster, and you see him just kind of jack it up there, and there's not really, there. it's not as, you know, compact and focused as it is normally when he is shooting three-point at a high clip and that's why you see some of the issues right you see right just puts it up real quick and bounces out because of that and to me that that looks like a big issue as to why he does that but that inconsistent number is definitely going to need to improve as he gets into the next level over here you see him one more time over there on the wing uh, as this ball goes it's gonna go straight to him and you see right gathers well dips a little bit but as he gets it together it's in one compact stroke and scores and that's the three-point shooting you really do like from him. And that's something, you know, to begin with, what you want from NBA wings, excuse me, guys who can space the floor. Over here, now we talk about three-level scoring. Second one, mid-range. He's got a very good mid-range game. He thrives in pick-and-roll sets as a ball handler, as you're going to see here. Very good handles, sound body control, excuse me, ball control as he dribbles. Uh, very tight handle, combines, moves really well. I like that. And when he gets to the mid-range, he has a very effective step back to garner space and, and score. Over here, right, pick and roll happening. See him get there. And then very nice step back and release. And then over here, see another pick and roll set. Over here, it gets there. Now he gets a switch. So now he just sizes up the guy, right? Crossover in between. See that ability, right? The combining and then eventually that step back. Conscious space. Now, obviously, that's not a shot that NBA pundits are going to love. The analytics guys, um, right here, right, the longest two pointer available. But we're just looking at the talent, his ability right now. That's the point that we're trying to stick at. But he's got some good ability, and that's really important for you know the modern day game and when when guys are going to play when big men, excuse me, are going to play drop coverage to be able to you know create in that mid range is going to be so key. And then. 
his ability to attack the rim. Um, at 6'10", he's obviously a mismatch problem in a lot of issues, or a lot of ways, rather. Uh, smaller guys, he can definitely power through a little bit. Uh, bigger guys, he can dribble past with dribble past with his handles, with his first step. He's got an underrated first step. You know, he's got some a surprising amount of athleticism. You know, he's not overly explosive, but he's definitely more spry and quick than you would think. Uh, has a good first step, and you see that as he gets downhill and attacks. And his finishing is inconsistent, though. Definitely struggles. He's not an above the rim athlete. He's definitely below the rim athlete. While his his speed, some of his movement traits are better. His vertical is not really, doesn't really pop off the screen. And you see him here, right, as he goes, size up here, gets that step. And over there, you see the nice hero, steps through, and can finish. And with a lot of length, he's able to do a lot of those things really well. You see that there. Over here, over time in that pick and roll set, you see him get downhill. Doesn't takes a little bit of contact but you see him fade away more than anything right he's got a good touch on those sort of things but that's an issue um the stuff the finishing through contact which we'll see over here and over here you're just gonna see him drive straight down and then you see the floater uh, which he is very very good at over here one more time you see him the big man influencing him to the middle so Jovic takes it inside a couple steps and then here gets set space and then a little shot put floater up there and that's a very savvy move that I like and then over here um, I like this a lot because this, this kind of represents that versatility that we're talking about right from modern day wings he, he we saw him be able to put the ball on the floor and score and pass so we'll see the passing um, but as a pick and roll ball handler is my point and now we're gonna see him as a screener because he's he's able to do both of those things and that versatility is very highly coveted right you see him here so the pick it's a staggered screen look over there he's setting that pick and then he just fades which he typically does when he does set screens um, right fades there and from there just attacks right nice first step but also nice awareness and instincts to just understand um, right as that ball comes to him here he sees all this just wide open area and as a defender closes out late instead of shooting that three he just takes that first dribble drive and goes down and off of those picks as a screener he operates well as a secondary playmaker off those dribble drives like you just saw here and that's something he can do pretty well and there he dunks it now we we'll look at some of the struggles with him over here he's going to come off a curl cut um, which he does pretty well gets the ball to an advantage um, but over here we'll see him just miss <laughs> as he drives and then just can't finish through and he usually finishes with either hand but you some of the things you see it, it, his body is just very upright up um, very rigid not really able to contort in so many ways and perhaps that's the reason he finish struggles to finish a little bit but he definitely does and you see him miss a lot of those right over here defenders influencing toward his left goes down attacks through and as he's fading away just can't finish once again and some of that is that power where he lacks that it's not an inability to or rather it's not that he's not willing to be powerful and go through but I think some of the physical maturation is going to be important over here right one more time see him over here as he gets that ball right fade away again little hook can't finish and you see that a lot of fading a lot of times but that's something which I think could you know be improved as he starts to put on more weight because at 215 there's definitely more uh, room to grow obviously but it's definitely inconsistent at this time and then over here gonna see a little pick and roll set and as this big man gets the ball off of the short roll you see uh, Jovic in the corner and as soon as that big man gets it right there the top of that key almost a little deeper um, and this help defender has to come help over there um, Jovic feels that immediately and just has the awareness and the instincts to just make a beautiful easy backdoor cut and he does this well when, when the defender falls asleep and he feels those kind of open gaps. It's not, you know, crazy often where he's doing you know, crazy amounts of off-ball movement, but you see some of those instincts, which I think, you know, push toward more promise. Now this is that inside-outside game we're talking about. Now we saw some of that attacking the rim, you know, straight up, 
but also the post up back to the basket is very interesting. Over here, as he gets that ball, he just starts getting to that post, right? And as he goes, a couple dribbles, keeps his head up. That's the thing I like so much, where you can get doubled, you can lose that ball easily if you're not aware of the other guys on the court and keeping your head up. Keeps dribbling, and then nice little spin, and then finishes through. Now that little elbow is likely to be a foul nowadays, but again, just that spin and that feel in the post. Over here, one more time, right? Gets that ball, and then drop step, beautiful move, and scores through. And then over here, now you're going to see him, right? Try to get some leverage. Can't really get there, but nice little one-legged fadeaway, right? That's that, those Dirk type of shots that you love to see. Um, creates space very well and does it. And then over here, you're going to see him. Here he's going to take advantage of smaller matchup, but this is just going to be a very fluid shot. Catches it in one motion, gathers, scores. And you see it, right? It's like he's stepping back even before he catches that ball. And because this defender is smaller, he knows that there is not even going to be a contest. And that's why he gets it up here. There's no way he's getting blocked. And scores a nice, nice <laughs> one-legged fadeaway. I mean, that, that's been you know, a patented thing, obviously, since Dirk Nowitzki, but very talented in that post. And you see a lot of it. We saw spin, the drop step. Um, you see him just, you know, power guys down sometimes, use the at attack dribble. His face up game solid. And over here, right? Here he's got a pure mismatch. And he just takes advantage of it, right? Body down, pushes, 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 and then little post hook. Easy. And you love to see that. And that's something that I think is going to be even more prevalent as time goes on. Because as he, again, physically matures and puts on more weight. He's going to be able to take advantage more as a four. Um, he's right now. It's probably more of a small ball four that he's going to be able to thrive in. But if he's able to take advantage of some of those matchups, or even as a three, right, um, it's just going to be more advantageous for him. And now we'll watch again his ability once he catches that ball. Right, right now defenders fronting him. Ball doesn't want to go in that post. Um, they pass it over. He catches it. And right here, this guy is going to come help because they don't want Jovic in that post just going one-on-one -on, -one on an easy mismatch, right? So they bring that double, but he's aware. He's not going to force a bad shot. He's not going to make a bad decision. Takes one step out, makes a nice, easy pass, and then pass to the corner, and then gets a hockey assist off that. Now, again, you're not getting an assist, but you're making the right play, and that's good big uh, um, passing out of the post. That's something you love to see. Over here, we'll just see. Like I said, he's got good transition speed, good apt, straight line speed, and you see him out in the open court. He looks good. So right there, he's over there. And watch as that ball starts going down. Again, you see some of the rigidness, right, with his body and the way he runs. Um, but it catches it, and then he just goes downhill and finishes through. Over here, got him again. And then he's pushing it, right? Slows down, and then scores through. And this time, he right, catches that ball, and you see him just push it, right? Nice little step, and pushes, and draws the foul because of that. But you love that ability to just push it, especially you know, in up-tempo offenses. You're gonna want a guy who's gonna be able to do that, either run with you or you know start at the break. And he flashes some of that coast-to-coast -coast ability, like you saw. Um, and yeah, it's very impressive. And it's not just the um, speed, but also just his, his, again, awareness and playmaking prowess, his passing -ish, um, vision is very excellent. And this I love. Um, catches that ball and then watch this. Whoa. <laughs> it's beautiful. I mean, just watch how difficult, the degree of difficulty on that can't be understated. Can't even be overstated, right? As he's dribbling. I mean, he's just slinging it with one arm effortlessly and throwing it perfectly. I mean, watch. It's like a quarterback throwing it, right? Look at the ball. Over the shoulder right here. Going over, catching it in stride and finishing. That's, I mean, not only is that so difficult to throw with one hand, difficult on the move all the way across the court and pinpoint perfectly. That is, that is beautiful. Over here, you'll see it again. As right, so he gets the ball now, watch him, right? Once again, and that one's even crazier because, I mean, for several reasons, right? Um, first off, he's got a defender right here coming into him. So he slows down his momentum a little bit, starts fading just a little bit. So you see his back fade away a little bit. 
throws it down, and now he's throwing it cross court to a guy where he's not as open. This defender's here, so he's going. He's got to throw it accurately, which he does in stride, and finishes. I mean, that's just beautiful. And then here, um, you can see him over there. See him run down, and watch as that pass goes to him. Just that beautiful touch pass and scores through. And that again, it's not just starting the break it's running the break understanding at all times no matter where you are whether it's the beginning the end whatever just being aware now we'll just look at his ability in the half court and his ability in those sets to still find guys and again as a pick and roll guy he's he's very he makes good decisions very good decisions see him go gets a little double and throws an easy little lob over here right now he gets a little trap to that corner and you like that because he just like slows down and comes into the double knowing what's going to happen, right? He he starts using the back. He he, he edges out this defender with his body, right? Shields him out, knowing this this guy, second defender, is there. And if he just holds it for just a half a second while he's there, he can draw that double and then hit his man right there. And that's a little drop off and easy pass get from there. So, his so playmaking is definitely a big thing. Uh, you see a lot of the point guard traits, you know, um, rather point forward traits. He's able to set up the offense, entry passes, um, setting up the offense, being a floor general in a little bit. Um, so, you love the, some of those traits. And you saw with the playmaking, just his ability overall is superb. His rebounding on the other side, average is somehow four rebounds a game, but he rarely crashes crashes actually more on the offensive glass than he does defensive glass but he's not really physical down there um doesn't crash doesn't put in much effort definitely can improve there but you know his size obviously that upside's there to some degree so you're gonna see him here as he shoots that ball um gonna miss and then you see him here he's gonna follow up and then watch him just stop as your guy just puts like one arm on him he can't fight around doesn't try to fight around much and doesn't get it and then over here um so you got Jovic over here so as that starts going down um his man right here is just gonna slip right by him get in front of him not much fight doesn't try to do anything he tries to push a little bit but gets pushed away easily maybe a foul but either way it's it's definitely um not what you love seeing there down in the glass um now his defense is very very interesting he is his lateral quickness is definitely a struggle doesn't really have great traits there um and that's why he can get beat off the dribble a good amount but his length does help him right seven foot wingspan um uses it very well he does try puts an effort but it's definitely you know the lateral quickness but then his awareness as a team defender is excellent with his rotation switches however understands being a help defender does a very good job there and i think that's a major asset and he definitely will thrive more so in a defense that is suited for that kind of defense uh we're talking about switches everything right helping doubling trapping those kind of things you'll definitely thrive in a lot more so over here, as this guy's dribbling down, you got Jovic over here. He's holding in the middle as that help defender, and he just slides over and blocks it. And don't be fooled. There's not much chop blocking upside with the vertical, but you see him there just make the right read, and even if he didn't block it, just contesting it. And then over here, I like this one a lot because you watch Jovic right here, right? As this man starts dribbling down right here, um... And Jovic sticks right now and then blocks it once again. What I really like here is this aspect of it. Um, Jovic's man right here. As as the ball handler starts dribbling into the paint, Jovic's man starts going up toward the top of the key, right? And Jovic, if he's just you know unaware, isn't really locked in, he would stay floating with him and go to the top of the perimeter. And this would be a wide open layup for this dude right here. But instead, Jovic holds right there because he feels that that layup is coming downhill and he can help contest it and that's why he does perfectly and because of that not a basket very intelligent and then over here um as this play goes on we start over here and you're going to see Jovic he sticks very well in off ball situations as well you know 
his defensive intensity can be there in those sort of scenarios, but it can definitely be inconsistent as well. Um, but you see him here, this play, and the things he can do. Right, sticks over there. So let's start out right here, right? So with the pick and roll happening, this this uh, screener, as soon as he sets it, he's going to go down. And then you watch, right? You watch Jovic, who's over here. His man's over there. And then Jovic, as soon as that screener starts coming down into the paint, Jovic does a good job sliding inward, right, to cut off that easy pass if it comes there. And he holds there until his man over here recovers back. Now Jovic can go back to his man. And you see him, right, a little bit of that ball denial, sticking with him, holding. Screen comes again, and as it does, you see Jovic again, right? Let's go back a second or two. Watch Jovic. He slides in to help that, and he also switches, right? His man originally is right here, but as this guy starts coming up, Jovic has to switch onto him. But what I love here is he doesn't fully commit, right, as that pass comes in, right? He was sneaking over, but he does a good job here for good measure. As this screener starts rolling down, Jovic starts falling away a little bit. Because as that pass is being received, Jovic understands that this is the main help defender who needs to cut it off. So he shouldn't fade down because that will create a big mess. So that defender comes here, and this guy's open in the corner. Pass goes over there. Jovic does a good job getting back to it. And then his man comes and contests it, and the guy travels because of that. And that happens because he goes down and contests it. The effort to put it in there, those rotations, and to quickly do it. Obviously... That's a shot that, you know, guys are going to make most of the time in the NBA if you give it to them. But just that effort to put it in there and understand those rotations are good. Now, his perimeter defense, like we talked about, the lateral quickness can be an issue at times. But you do see his length definitely help. And we'll see some of those clips of that here. So we'll start out here in a one-on-one -on -one situation, right, with that ball handler. Um, step back. So as he starts getting downhill, you watch Jovic, right? Because the little crossover gets back, gets stepped back a few feet, uh, slides a little too far, right? And then the guy starts sizing him up a little bit, is ready to pull. But Jovic is able to contest it pretty well because of that. But you see some of that ability, the lateral quickness, him sliding down. And with this defense, they switch so well and they help so well that a lot of his mistakes do get covered up. So it's not as obvious to the eye a lot of times, but... He certainly does struggle in a lot of aspects and consistent a lot. The length does help him, obviously. Um, so we'll start out here with Jovic over here. And as soon as play happens and that pass starts coming down, he makes a switch onto right here. Um, again, switching very well, very easily, and you see him, right, extend out very well and sticking out. You see how far out he is, right, off ball intensity, always there. Now he's there one-on-one, -on -one, right, gets beaten off a little bit, but able to recover and contest very well. But again, this is, um, you see as he comes down here, right, at this point, when he starts going sideways, things are not good. And this guy's small, but, you know, most guys in the NBA might just power through you at this point, will likely to draw a foul, and you're not able to stick and contain as well as you'd like. Over here. Because you got Jovic, and then a little motion go, and then from right here, again, you saw it, right? Because that little step, now look at him. At that point, NBA shooters are going to shoot, are going to score. From You see how much space is here right now? That isn't too much in the NBA, but obviously he doesn't. Then he starts dribbling down again, and again at this point, Jovic, you see his feet. He's sliding, he's parallel to this guy. That should be an easy basket, an easy layup, but this man over here is going to come help contest and because of that he's in a basket so that's what I mean by some of the mistakes get short up but that is some of the issues and then over here you got Jovic in the corner Jovic out in the corner and then his, he falls his man and now he's sticking right and now right off that dribble again parallel to his man trying to stick through and because of that because there's you know a lane this guy right here, who's the help defender, 
is obviously concerned and he loses his eyes and he thinks that he needs to help or he's just watching that he gets contained a little bit and so his man right here is going to slip right by him it's easy pass little dump off and scores because of that and again those are some of the mistakes that you know don't show up so obviously in just one-on-one -on -one scoring but when you are dragging other guys that is a problem because you're not able to stick as well you're gonna need help or you're gonna have guys lose eyes because of that because of that concern so it's something we're gonna see and see how it really um, affects him in the NBA how teams utilize him or don't utilize him and how much the defense will be a factor but I think it's not the worst in the world you saw with the length he is able to contest very well but there are obviously woes there and issues there um, but overall you see his offensive package the offensive versatility and just the overall scoring ability passing ability ability to create uh, inside outside take advantage of some of the mismatches he does bring a lot as an NBA wing he's he's very skilled there's definitely room to improve but there is a lot of things he does very well so he's an interesting guy that could could be a very you know just slide right into a lineup um, in the mid to late first round likely but that's been the rundown on Nikola Jovic hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you have a great day